I'm at the Metro Theater in Vancouver today, and I'm about to interview some local actors for an upcoming pantomime production of King Arthur. All you need is love. Wah, 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 wah. Um, unlike most characters in musicals, King Arthur doesn't know how to dance at the start. He does, everyone just does the dances and he just sort of stares at everyone confused. Um, so as it goes on, he starts learning how to dance and it helps show the strength of the character because you have the lifted posture and sort of like the power stances and stuff. So it helps sort of reflect a bit of status and the awkwardness of the character at the same time. Yeah, so Guinevere, um, she's a very idealistic person. Um, she's a real leader um, in the show. She kind of helps Arthur uh, find his way. She sees the good in people. Um, so in the dance sequences, Guinevere is often leading everybody. She sort of starts a move and everyone will follow. Um, so, and a lot of uh, my movements in the pieces are really big and um, really expressive. Well, the dame herself is quite voluptuous. I mean, when we have her on, she's big boobs and a great bum. And in fact, we feature and talk about her bum a lot in the show. So, uh, a lot of the movements that I do are not accenting anything else at that moment. Dance and using dance is a way to give normal movement accents. Um, it's very much about keeping myself as light as possible on stage and being very intentional with arm movements as well as keeping myself very light on my feet. I embody the essence of the demon, I would say, in my body movements. The way I see the demon, he's demonic. He is scattered, unpredictable. He's a force of power uh, rather than an actual person. So I like my movements to be big and strong because of the power of the demon. My hands are often like this. I'm moving them up and down. I like to duck down so the light shines up and accentuates my facial expressions. It's all about moving with confidence and power and unpredictability. So lots of shifting movements, lots of moving around. He isn't a very stationary kind of guy. He's a demon, so you don't really know what he's going to do. Well, with the character Mopsy, I have to use a lot of physical movement, so really enticing the audience through my movement, and that comes from basic dance steps and then translating it through the rest of my body to get the audience really engaged. I think that movement in general, even in real life, like I'm using my arms to speak right now, it just helps further what you're trying to project, like what you're trying to say to someone. And so dance puts it into a new perspective and it puts in like a kind of more stylish way to express your words. I think Arthur's, he's a very young character. So expressing it with like jumps and little hand motions is always good for younger people. So just, it's just very young choreography. That makes sense. Yeah. You're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in order to embody the character, you actually have to embody it. And once that happens, the movements pretty much come right, arise right out of the character. One of the things I do like about community theater is no matter what your body shape or your ability or your skill level, you can always find some way to move to advance the character. So in this case, I'm rather lucky because Merlin is a character of uncertain age, and so am I. So I can move as little or as much or as fast or as slow as I am able. Dance, you have to use a lot of your emotions and you need to use like a lot of your gestures in your body. So when you're a character, you technically don't just like stand there and say your lines. You have to like use your emotions. So technically, if I'm saying, I'm the dragon, say, hi, I'm the dragon, I wouldn't go, hi, I'm the dragon. I'd go, hi, I'm the dragon, like you would be dancing and stuff. So yeah. Um, 
I was trained at Le Grand Ballet Canadien. I've worked with Ballet, Le Ballet Jazz and a couple of other small c companies around Montreal. And Allison? I was trained with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet Professional Program. I'm a full member of the Royal Academy of Dancing, and I work with Le Grand Ballet Canadien and a number of uh, companies around the world in addition yeah. to Canada. And this was several <laughs> decades ago. <for> me, so. <laughs> What I'm finding is that a lot of the kids are throwing up 100% of themselves into the production. They're giving it their all and that's a really refreshing thing to see. They're, they're really putting in the time, the effort and the, the energy that needs to put a show together. Yeah, I find as a professional, it's, I reiterate what Anthony has said, that you know we're thinking about the show and the end product is, is the show. The downside of being a professional in an amateur setting is that the steps are very simplistic. But on the other hand, it is great that you're in a community setting because as a professional, you can choreograph and you can develop and think of the ideas mm -hmm. for yourself and incorporate those into the into the actual production. I have to say, with, uh, I was very impressed with the choreography for this because it utilizes the talents of the, the actors to the best of their ability, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't go beyond them. In most scenes, we're trying to upstage each other. We're joking around, putting yeah. each other down, singing, oh, yeah. dancing. Yeah, it's, so we, we work as a, as a, as a group. As a team. Yeah, yeah. Just the more leg pulling we do as a as a group, the the funnier everything is. So yeah, yeah. 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 And if we make a few mistakes, look, yeah, as, yeah, as, as long as we're having fun with each other. I think that's the thing. Yeah. Like it was, you incorporate the mistakes into your character, and that's yeah, actually even, yeah, even yeah, more like funny. Surrounds the dumbass. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you forget a line, it's or forget a move. It's like oh, whoa, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like some of the songs are very detailed with the steps involved, so you really have to. Uh, keep on top of it. You really got to remember what goes next mm. and then really determine the yeah. Match it up to the yeah. song and then you got dialogue on top of that. So it's... This is a great group though. This yeah. it, We all seem to have really good chemistry with one another and I think that's what sort of makes it much easier and much funnier on yeah. stage for us. Mm. Yeah. I'd have to say, especially for Broadway jazz, it's definitely amping up the humor in a pantomime, especially for a pantomime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of room to be really big with everything that you're doing, which is exactly like what a pantomime is in essence, so it helps so much with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they say that you dance because words and singing isn't enough anymore, so in a pantomime setting especially, uh, the dance works great to convey all the different emotions or different characters. Mm -hmm. um, we have a full-on can-can kick line, so it's... It's really funny if it's done perfectly well. Yeah. Anything goes in pantomimes, that's kind of the rule. So. <laughs> yeah. it's a fantasy, right. Anachronisms so. are a way of life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> trying to say that you want someone to stay, for example, you'd like, 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 depends on the song. Like, Big Woman Cooking in the Kitchen is just like pure chaos. You gotta so look you, mad, It's you organized look chaos. Yeah. It's organized chaos that sort of depicts what's happening yeah. so and you're basically you're showing that with your words and like your body the dance moves but you also got to show that like with your face and like mm -hmm. the sound of your voice and that sort of stuff like sure you can go through the motions and say the words but it's not actually going to look good unless you like show yeah. it on your face i feel like you kind of have to feel like you kind of have to imagine yourself in that situation or at least for me yeah. <laughs> and then putting that into the show and then yeah. using the dance instruction that we've been given to sort of just use that energy and put it into that, and then I feel like that's what makes the final product look how it does. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot with like traveling between the spots, like it doesn't look at first like choreography, so they're going to talk to someone, or they're panicking, and wait, look, they're in perfectly choreographed positions, how did that happen? Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of, yeah. Well, one bit about being ensemble is that, like, even though the audience is probably going to be looking at the person talking, you have to still stay in character in the background. You still have, can't, you can't just be like waiting for a bus. You got to be like interacting with other people. You got to be interacting like with going with. What's you have going to be in stage. the moment. Yeah. 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 If you took out the songs, the plotline would make less sense. I think. It would be yeah. no sense whatsoever. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that it's really important that we have like the songs and stuff so that it will like move the story along. Because if like. For example, like with Dance A Lot, like that's kind of like the anthem of like Dance A Lot, and we kind of need that to like convince um, Arthur to like be our king and stay in Dance A Lot. 
it reminds me of when I read aloud and that I'm telling the story with my whole body now. Like tell they like to really engage yeah. and, and own the story and know, you know, yeah. Know what's going on. Yeah. I like uh, the interaction between the audience, the kids shouting back and the uh, demon or whoever shouting back at them. Uh, my first panto was well, almost 30 years ago and I was intrigued as a young man uh, at, the, at the dame and uh, the antics that the dame got up to and the comedy and the improvisation so um, that stuck with me for many years. I've been coming to pantomimes at this theatre uh, like before I was born and then since then so uh, I've seen all sorts of traditions um, and a lot of the times there's callbacks to other like past pantomimes that, like uh, characters from Cinderella from like the pantomime before would come on stage and like you're in the wrong panto and <laughs> so there's like constantly uh, uh, time breaks like, logic breaks and Easter yeah it's set it yeah and Easter yeah. eggs and yeah it's breaking set in the fourth England, wall and oh yeah that's like that's a classic panto it's like yeah. Yeah, I'm just more used to not being to not breaking the fourth wall because it's not Deadpool so. <laughs> <laughs>